Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Fantastic. That's quiet. Y'all are terrible. I need some energy up here. My personality is naturally full of energy, so I need you guys to be just as energetic as I am. So how are you doing this morning? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I need a little bit of confidence this morning. Um, so I've said it a hundred times. Most of you have been sitting in here the whole time, but again, uh, please check out this etherpad. It's going to have everything digitally available for you. Um, so you can jump on there, get all the commands that you need. Uh, we also have the free note IRC available. Everybody that is our barbecueers in the back um, is going to be answering questions for you live. Feel free to raise your hand if you get stumped. One of them will jump by and help you out. Um, but before we get started, I want to kind of get an idea. This is a beginner's class, and that's a little hard to define at a technical conference. But what we are treating this is, is kind of a, I'm new to APIs, I'm not sure how this works, I want to create secrets, I want to interact with Barbican. So, how many of you would consider yourself to be a super user? I am an API master. I use curl on a daily basis, how about those? All right, I've used Postman before. Awesome, okay, so it looks like we've got a lot of curl guys, we've got some Postman people. If you're not familiar with these APIs and stuff like that, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you jump on Chrome and get Postman um, and use the collection, which is available on your workshop uh, handout and on this Etherpad. Awesome. Let's get started. So today, just in case you were wondering where you're at, you're at Barbican securing your secrets. Um, we're going to be talking about how to interact with Barbican, what it is. Um, my portion here will be, I'm Chelsea Winfrey. I'm a developer for uh, Barbican at Rackspace. Um, my partner here is John Verbanek. He will be doing the actual workshop. And we've got a great set of team in the back, Steve Heyman, Doug, the PTL, um, and a bunch of other barbicaneers. Uh, you can reach us at these, this information. Cool. So what are we going to talk about today? Today I'm going to talk about the importance of secret storage, why you should use Barbican, what is Barbican, and how do you use Barbican. Let's get started. So to me, there's really three components of secret storage. Key management, private data, and trusted data. Let's go over key management. How many times have you asked yourself, where are my keys? My house keys, my car keys, anything of that nature. It's probably a daily question for some of us. Um, but something that we don't often ask ourselves is, where shouldn't I put my keys? Right? We walk in the house, we dump them on the counter, it's fine, no big deal. But what about leaving them in your car? Is that a great idea? You've got them right there accessible to anybody that wants to take your car, right? It's not great, let's not do that. Um, how about inside of the car, right? Got your key, oh, I put it under the visor, they won't see it. I don't know if you guys watch movies like I do, but every movie I've seen, it's like somebody hides the key there thinking they're gonna get away with it, and sure enough, somebody steals the car right out from underneath them. Let's not do that either. <clears throat> Next topic, private data. So what is private data? Private data is anything that you don't want someone else to know about. Medical records, financial records, contracts, a surprise birthday party, database passwords, whatever it is, that data is secret to you. That is a private data. So this right here you're looking at is my business plan. And this is my dog trying to tell you that he wrote my business plan, right? So how do you know you can trust where this data is coming from and how do you trust that what this data is? Um, and we'll go into that a, lot, a little bit more in, in depth. Um, but how do you know you can trust them and who do you trust? You guys all seen this, right? Everybody's been on the internet before, this little green bar. This is SSL and TLS, but essentially this little green bar states that someone has verified that this company exists and that that data that you're getting is secure. Um, so this is kind of one, uh, one way that we define trust and show trust. So, why should you use Barbican? How about these great three topics? Anybody familiar with these three? Can anybody be an expert on these now? Yeah? <laughs> Fantastic. So, why Barbican? Where is your key and where is your data? Something that is really important is using Barbican, it is a secret storage place. So, you store your private key in Barbican, you put your data elsewhere. That way, if someone compromises your system with the data, they're not gonna have access to what it is. If you're encrypting your data, what have you, um, you won't have that issue. So not storing your key in your car is very important. So we've got key management checked off. 
Next, why Barbican? Uh, private data. Encryption and decryption is hard. Anybody here familiar with cryptography and decryption? Awesome. Can you tell me what this says? Nobody? It's pretty difficult, right? This is encrypted data. Um, I don't want to personally be sitting in a room trying to type it out like, oh, figure out some math problems just to decrypt this stuff. I want to make it easy, but I also want it to be secure. So saving that private key inside of Barbican protects this from getting compromised. I can show this to you, and I, won't, I don't even remember what it is, but you won't know what this is unless you have that key. So cool, now your data is private. Check that off. Why Barbican trusted data? So we talked about that SSL, that green trust bar, right? When you manage that private key that you're storing away secretly inside of your Barbican with your bulldogs, what have you, um, you're making sure that that certificate is secure. If they don't have the private key to compromise that certificate, they can't impersonate you to another customer. Um, and when that customer can trust you by giving them their, your credit inf their credit card information and their money, and you don't mess it up, i.e. Target, um, you build trust with that customer, right? So cool, now we have trusted data. So what is Barbican? What does it make? So everybody here should be familiar with Python, so the just OpenStack language. It is open source, um, meaning that everybody has access to it. And that's really important in the encryption world because you can see what's going in and coming out before you buy it, right? You don't want to, they say, oh, I have this super secret, secret special uh, algorithm that's going to protect your stuff. Well, you don't know what it is. Maybe it's an easy thing to break. A lot of the cryptography guys will sit in a room and try to break stuff all day. But by having it open source, you know exactly what you're getting into and you know just how secure it is. Secondly, or thirdly, I guess, according to this slide, um, it's incubated in OpenStack. So right now we're trying to get a lot of buy-in. So if you go back to your teams and your groups and be like, oh, Barbican sounds really cool. It'll help us get a step further, I guess. Um, so it is in OpenStack. We do have all that stuff available to you on the links provided. Um, it is a RESTful API, and that's kind of what we're going to cover today. Um, so going through that, how it works. Um, and in the end, you're going to see this bullet point a whole lot more. It is a key management system. Cool, so let's get, before we get started with the actual workshop, let's go over some of the tools of the trade. We have a secret, you've heard me say that a couple times. It's a singular item that is stored within Barbican. Um, so when you store something inside of your Barbican, we call that a secret, singular. An order can be a timed secret generation or certificate order um, or certificate purchase, something of that nature. It does not necessarily have Immediate action, it can be prolonged over, uh, over some time. And it'll track the history for you and show you like, oh, this is what the status of it is, what have you. Um, a container is exactly like it sounds. It's a big box full of secret references. Now, it's not the actual secrets. It is just a pointer to where those secrets live. And that's important. You'll see why moving forward. Cool. So we've seen this slide. Is everybody set up and ready to go? We're about to get this thing running. It's going to be fun. You're going to have a great time. Verbanic's going to knock it out of the park. You guys are going to have a great time. If you have s any questions, like I said, raise your hand. Um, got barbecue ears in the back. We've got handouts if you don't have them in the back over there. Uh, Etherpad's available. Any questions before I move on? Anything? Awesome. You guys have been great. Now I'm going to hand it over to Verbanic. Awesome. So good morning. All right, so I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the basic aspects of Barbican in and of itself. Um, again, this is a very uh, basic overview of the different calls within Barbican. We're going to kind of go through each REST call, just give you an idea of what the data is, what it, you know, what it does, how, um, how you retrieve it, all that kind of thing. Um, this is a very kind of hands-on uh, interactive session here. So um, at any time, if you have questions or things like that, we've got people in IRC channel, Etherpad, and there's also a bunch of uh, barbecueers in the back to answer your questions directly, um, depending on what they are. Um, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, authentication really quick. Now, one of the things that a lot of people may, be f may or may not be familiar with, um, as, this is beginning, as this is a beginner course, I'm going to kind of 
talk about authentication a little bit with Keystone. Um, now we're not going to go into the nitty gritty of this. There's a lot of you know very very smart people here work on Keystone. If you have more questions, um, they are a great resource for that kind of thing. Um, but really, what we're interested in from a pers from the perspective of Barbican is how do we know that our data is is uh, secure to only us? And so we're going to kind of just talk about that a little bit, mainly just because each one of you are, are actually going to do this authentication step to talk to uh, Barbican. So with that in mind, uh, anybody who's familiar with Keystone already should understand this, um, this quite well. But the whole premise of this is based on an actual token that we include to Barbican, which tells uh, Barbican who we are and yeah, whether or not we actually have the correct credentials to access a specific secret or to conduct actions on, on our secrets or things like that. So the basic authentication step of how we get a token is you have our user here, a little, little guy in the left-hand corner, and he makes a call up to Keystone and says, hmm, I, I'm, I have these credentials. Um, I want a token. Keystone, with that, with if the to if the credentials are correct, then Keystone returns back, gives us our uh, our authentication token, which then we can use for um, for all of our calls to Barbican. From that point forward, the user makes a request to Barbican, whatever it may be, to with the token included. Barbican then just goes up to Keystone, verifies that that token is correct. If it is, returns us back the correct response. Now, for anybody who's familiar with Keystone, this should look quite familiar. Um, and we'll actually look at making, actually doing this here in a second, like right now. All right, so just for those who are not familiar with making calls to Keystone, uh, this is kind of a very, shortened version of this. And you'll see in here that we just make a post call to Keystone. We ask it for our tokens. We include uh, our password credentials. Obviously, we'll have a, each one of you has a username and password and a tenant on that worksheet that you're given. Um, now, as you might see from the people next to you, all the passwords are the same. So uh, be good citizens and don't Try not to uh, run over each other. Um, what we'll be working with is a very basic, um, most like like a pseudo development environment for Barbican. So, and this is in no way secure, but this is more of just a way for us to play with it in a contained environment here. So, you'll see for on your handout, you'll have a corresponding username, password, and tenant, or project. So, you'll use those in all of your calls. When you, make the when you make the request, you'll then re retrieve a response where you'll see under here you'll have access token ID, and that will be the, the actual token that we you'll use for the rest of this workshop. Two things to keep in mind on this if you're not familiar with, with Keystone is that expired and issued timestamps. Now, for we set up this little development Keystone to give us about two hours. Um, so should be perfectly fine for this workshop, but keep that in mind if for some odd reason you start getting unauthentic or uh, unauthorized type errors, you might just need to re-authenticate, especially if you play with this after the workshop. All right, with that in mind, let's uh, go ahead and hop in and grab your tokens, and then we will move on. If you have any questions, we got people in the back. We also, um, every, We've got a lot of uh, people helping out on the workshop IRC. Okay, grab your tokens. And we'll give about a minute for this.
And just as a reminder, if, if you do have, uh, if you're very new to APIs and things like that, we do have a few cheat sheets for both Postman and for curl. So if you, if you just kind of want to follow along, but you don't really want to go through all the steps of having to uh, write out the commands yourself, those are there for you to, to work with. Does anybody need more time? Raise your, okay. We'll give it us a couple more minutes. It's Raise your hand if you need a little more time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and kind of move on a little bit here so, so we can get to everything. If you, if you need a little help, uh, raise your hand and a barbicaneer can kind of help you through this. Okay. All right. Now that we actually have our authentication token, we're going to talk about secrets a little bit, what a secret is, what kind of data is within it, and a secret in and of itself is, is just a singular item that contains specific data that you consider secret. Along with that, we kind of have it split into two different, um, two different categories of what is a part of a secret. We have what's referred to as the metadata, and we also have a payload. Now, the metadata can, is exactly what it sounds like. It's, you know, we have things like content type and algorithm, 
bit length, name, mode, expiration date, all of which you know you don't necessarily need, but it is very helpful to understand and document what that secret actually is. Along with that, we have a payload. Now, we accept three different types of payloads. We accept uh, plain text, base 64 uh, payloads, and raw binary. Now, we're not gonna really talk about raw binary today as it's more of an advanced use case, but if you're really curious about that, there's plenty of uh, barbecaneers here and in the IRC channels which can kind of talk to you a little bit more about those use cases and, uh, and give you a little more information around them. With that in mind, we're gonna kind of look at creating a secret. So when we're creating a secret, we actually make a post to our endpoint slash v1 slash secrets. We, give, we tell Barbican that the content type is application JSON. We include, most importantly, our X auth token, which indicates to Barbican who we are and whether or not we have permissions to access, or in this case, create a secret. So you'll you make sure to include that. And we'll include a little body here. Um, in this case, we are gonna add the metadata um, name for, we can call it super secret thing, just as, just because we want to. We're gonna set an expiration date of, uh, of sometime this year, and we have a payload of, of a string called beer, because you obviously need an expiration date with beer. Anyhow, we're also gonna inform Barbican that our payload is a text plane, so just telling Barbican that it's a string, pretty much, that we're including in here. When we uh, post this to our endpoint, we then get a response here, and it is this quite long secret reference. Now this is a absolute reference to the location of your secret. This is important from the context of, if you might be familiar with more of Hadios-based um, references, and this is what that is. Now in this case, we're not really gonna talk about why that's important today, but if you're curious, plenty of people in the back to kind of talk to you about that. Um, suffice it to say, it's an absolute uh, place for our secret and where it is stored and how we can re retrieve it. So make sure once we make this call, you'll wanna save this secret ref for our following calls. So let's go ahead and create our secret. And we'll just give a couple minutes for this and then we'll, we'll move on. If you, at any time you need help, there's people in the IRC room, there's people in the back. Um, there's also the etherpad. So if at any time you need help, just raise your hand and a barbicaneer will come assist you.
again, if you uh, came in a little bit later, uh, we also have links there for cheat sheets to make this a little bit simpler. If this is the first time you've you've uh, worked with APIs or worked with uh, any particular calls like this. We'll give ourselves uh, another minute or so. And uh, this will start getting a little bit easier and faster as we go on as a lot of the calls will start looking very similar. Need a little more time? Just raise your hand. All right. Now that we've created a secret, let's retrieve its metadata. So in this case, we will be using a get call to the exact secret rep that we were given in the last call. And what what you'll see here is the information we provided with a little extra more or a little extra data to. Uh, based on what we saw in one of the first slides when we were talking about metadata. So you'll see in here, we'll have a created time, an, expira uh, an updated time, and an expiration. And the created time and the updated time, they're important mainly for understanding when, when the secret was, uh, when we issued a creation and whenever it actually uh, fully was updated in the DB. We have the expiration we provided. We also have a couple uh, null values in here for mode, algorithm, bit links, because we did not provide them. Um, we also have a secret ref in here, which is just more of a verification. So when you're looking at uh, the output of, of this kind of information, you're, it's, it's exactly the same thing that you provided when you retrieve the, the metadata, but it's a nice verification of what you're actually looking at. We also, in this case, we specified text plain for a content type, so it's telling us that is the default that we are retrieving. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and grab the metadata, and we'll give it just about a minute for this, and then we'll, we'll move on. Raise your hand if you need a little more time. All right. Now that we've retrieved the secret metadata, verified that actually what we uh, uh, verified that what we created with is actually stored. Let's actually retrieve the payload. Now, in this case, uh, 
You do the exact same git on here. We, uh, the only thing that's different about this to the last call is we tell Barbican that we want to accept that, that content type that we specified when we saved, when, when we created the secret. In this case, it was text plain. So we're gonna say, we're gonna grab this secret, we're, then we're gonna say accept text plain, we're gonna include our auth token as always, and our response will be the string beer. Now, I wish we could actually give a nice little emoji there for beer, but yeah, you can do what you can. So let's go ahead and retrieve the payload. If you need more time, raise your hand. Okay, we'll give it another minute. Does anybody need more time? Okay. Now we've retrieved the payload, we've retrieved the metadata. Let's talk about actually retrieving a list of secrets. Now, a lot of cases, you know exactly the secrets that you've created. You know, you've created them, you have absolute references to them, and you might store that some someplace. However, there's cases where that you've created a number of secrets, but you don't know exactly what the references are. In this case, we provide a way to list out all of your secrets for a given user. In this case, um, it actually appears in a paginated form. If you're familiar with paginated interfaces, essentially allows for you to uh, specify you know, a limit on the number of secrets, number of secrets that you can return or items you can return and an offset to kind of how far you are in the stack. With this, it'll actually, the content of each secret will look rather familiar because it's exactly the same sort of metadata that we saw when we, cr when we retrieved a secret's metadata. Now, this is actually where the metadata comes in handy to help identify whenever you're, you're just looking through your secrets to figure out which one you were actually intending and from there you can grab your secret ref. In this case, um, you'll also see up there, there is a next um, attribute in here. Now, for all of your users, because you, unless you've been creating a whole bunch of secrets, you won't see that until you go over the, the uh, initial limit of 10. But if you care to experiment with that, you can do that on it as well. In this case, with this user, um, we've snipped some of this content here, but there's, this user has around uh, 3,800 secrets in it. But yes, let's uh, go ahead and grab our list of secrets. And just as a reminder, always include your XAuth token. And uh, yeah, let's grab our, uh, our secrets. In this case, especially since you've, if you've only created one, you should only see one in there, just as a.
Anybody need more time? Raise your hand. All right. We've created, got the metadata, got the payload, got a list. Let's actually delete it. In this case, um, because each one of you has an admin role for your given project or your tenant, um, you can actually delete. However, specifically with role-based access, you can limit who can delete. But for the uh, purposes of the workshop, your user has permissions to do this. Um, this is very important in the sense of you wouldn't necessarily want a user consuming just being able to delete a secret such as like a private key or a certificate because that could, well, bring down an infrastructure if you're not careful. So, yes. In theory, if you change the roles in your own instance of Barbican, you could reassign that if you really wanted to. But for this specific instance of Barbican, only the admin role can delete. Um, with this, it's, it is an HTTP delete to the secret ref. So if you try to do this to something else, it, I would hope it doesn't work. But in this case, just delete on the secret ref, including your XAuth token. And let's do that really quick. We'll give it about 30 seconds to a minute. Oh, okay. Is it possible to delete the bound role and leave it to master like that? Ah. So, not at the moment. And I, I forgot to mention this. Um, when we delete, it's actually only a soft delete. So, in this case, the secret still exists in the, in the database, but it is not accessible anymore. This is primarily so when you're talking about compliance and things like that where you have to hold specific data for longer periods of time, then... Yes. Yes, and we, we actually... In theory, all of that data is still in existence, including the metadata. Uh, it's just not accessible to the user. If you start running through the DB, you can then uh, grab that information. We have had discussions about how we deal with audit, and um, we really haven't fleshed most of that out yet. However, for the moment, our current answer is just a soft delete, and if, if we have to prove that, the information still exists for an X period of time. Does that answer your question? Okay. Does anybody need more time? Okay. We'll give us another 30 seconds. So, updating secrets. Um, yes, you can update, but it's in a, in a very limited context. And I really didn't talk about this, so there's actually two different ways of creating a secret. There is the way that we did it, which is the very simple, including a payload in the initial post. But there's also a what we refer to as a two-step secret, which is where you create the metadata for the secret, and then you then upload or you put to the secret with the binary contents or things like that. Now that's, that's only a one-time action. So you can't re-update re a secret. And it's primarily just because you really don't want potentially overwriting of secret content. But there is sort of a way to update. Does that answer your question? Okay. Do we need more time? Or are we good? All right. So we talked about creating a secret, retrieving the metadata, retrieving the payload, retrieving a list, and deleting it. Let's talk about orders. So orders is a, 
it's generally around what we consider to be workflows. In this case, it's an action that will generate a secret. So exactly like I was mentioning before, it's an asynchronous operation. So it kind of en encapsulates the entire workflow and the history of the secret creation. So oftentimes this might be, like say if you're creating a uh, SSL certificate, that is a long-term type process that might span anywhere from you know, a few minutes to days to weeks, depending on the certificate you're getting and from what CA. But in order, with, with it being an asynchronous type of creation, it allows for Barbican to interact to a certificate authority or to a uh, HSM or whatever, whatever provider on the back end to create your secret, but in a long term, not long term, but a uh, uh, potentially uh, lengthy process. With that, we're going to talk about creating an order. This is, looks uh, quite similar to, uh, some of this data looks quite similar to creating a secret. Um, in this case, it's just a post on endpoint slash version slash orders. Like with a secret call, secret creation call, we give it a content type. And in this case, we're going to give a body and we're going to say we want a key back. And within that, we're going to include a metadata with a mode CBC, bit length, 256, uh, algorithm AES, with a, just a name for some metadata to know what it was. And we want to uh, have that specified to be application octet stream for the way that the secret is retrieved. Um, if you're not familiar with what the mode, bit length, and algorithm are, don't worry about it. Just use the values and it'll be fine. Um, like with secret, we also get a reference on creation, and you'll use that for our uh, future calls. The uh, important thing about this is that, that is that the type could be like a certificate, or it could be whatever uh, plugin backend that can support this kind of information. So in this case, we're just doing a key, which is an insecure key, just to be clear here, because this is not a, a secure version of Barbican. But for the instance of this workshop, it's perfectly fine. So let's create an order really quick, and uh, then we'll jump into some more actions. Question? So the order is a asynchronous workflow. So in other words, you're having Barbican create a secret on your behalf. So that could be a key, a certificate. Um, maybe you write something custom for, for Barbican on your own instance of Barbican to, to, to process something for you. Um, whereas a secret in of itself is that you are storing, like you know the contents already, and it is a synchronous action where you say, I want to store this, this blob of data or this text for re later retrieval. Answer your question? For SSH keys, no. Um, I'm actually looking back there because it looked like one of my teammates was actually going to say something. Anybody need more time? OK. Let's get one. Now, this, this should start looking rather familiar. 
Um, in this case, we're going to use the order ref that we got. We're going to do a get call on that. In this case, you'll see a status on here, which is rather important from an asynchronous perspective. Um, specifically, like, whenever you're creating, say, a certificate that you might want, that status might be in a pending or waiting on CA, or um, there could be a plethora of different statuses that that could actually be, depending on on your use case. In this case, um, we are having Barbican create an insecure blob of data that we consider to be a key. So it's going to be virtually go active immediately for you. You'll see in here the data that we provided, so our type, the metadata we provided. And you'll also see two things in here. You'll see the order ref, that, which is just that verification piece. And then we also see a secret ref. And this is the actual refer uh, reference to the secret that Barbican created for us. So you can then retrieve that and um, take a look at the information Barbican generated. Likewise, you'll also have this created and updated. Now, the created in and of itself is, yeah, the original timestamp. The updated, now this might be, because this is a asynchronous workflow type process, this might be continuously updated, um, depending on how many steps in the process that you'd have to go through. With that in mind, uh, let's grab our order. And just as a reminder, if you start running into issues or anything like that, there is that lovely, um, those lovely cheat sheets that can pretty much you can either copy and paste or use Postman to kind of just point and click to the what you'd like to do. And for more advanced users, we do actually. We are working on a command line client for Barbican, which uh, one of the Barbicaneers can kind of talk you, you through. But for more of the talking about the information that Barbican consumes and pushes out, it's a little bit easier to sometimes talk about the REST calls directly. Anybody need more time? Much like with secrets, some cases uh, you might forget the reference or you just want to start looking through with the, the orders that you have created. And with that, we provided a paginate interface to, to grab that information. So this will look just like the way secrets does with its interface. So you'll have a next in there if you have more than 10. Um, and you'll also have the order data directly available for you. In this case, Shorten this up a little bit. And this is just on uh, just uh, retrieving the get on uh, v1 slash orders. Let's go ahead and do that really quick, and then we will move on. If you need more time, raise your hand. Okay. Oh, it's a helper question. Um, one of the barbicaneers. Can get some uh, help on the front here. Yeah. Not at the moment. Um, The, the question was, uh, is there a way to know whether or not the algorithms are 
what algorithms are supported. Not ideal, but. We'll give it another about 30 seconds. Need more time? Raise your hand. Alrighty. Let's delete it. In this case looks very similar to the way that uh, secrets functions. So in this case, we'll make a delete call on the order ref, including our token to do so. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. Li just like with the secret, um, this is bound to the given role that you are. In this case, because you're an admin role, you can delete this. But in a normal type environment, you may not be able to, depending on how you how your instance of Barbican is, is set up. So we'll give it just a minute, and then we'll move on. If you need a little more time, raise your hand. Alrighty. So we've created an order, we've retrieved it, retrieved the list, deleted it. Let's talk about containers. So containers is, is exactly what it sounds like. It is a grouping secrets. Um, the primary use case for this is where you have a specific collection of secrets that you kind of need to keep in one, one spot. A case of this would be like a RSA key or a certificate where you have to store a private key, public key, a passphrase for it, or in the case of a certificate, um, you might also have an intermediate chain or things like that to go along with it. Um, we also, we, have, we do support three different types at the moment. In this case, a certificate, an RSA, type container and a generic one. A generic one you can use for whatever you want and kind of mold it a little bit. Um, the example I believe that we're going to be using here is an RS, or actually we're going to be using a generic container. But if you're so interested, you can play with a RSA container or a certificate container on a different point. So let's create one. In this case, we're going to make a post to v1 slash containers. Um, including a content type, our auth token. In this case, we're just going to say it's a generic container. The primary reason why we're doing this is so we only have to provide one secret ref in, in here right now. Uh, this is mainly just for simplicity here. In this case, we're going to give it a, a, an arbitrary name. We're going to call it pit, a pitcher. And we're going to give, we're going to have a list in here with a name and a secret ref. Now, this requires you to have a secret ref, which as you've deleted the, the one you had earlier, you'll have to create another one for this. But in this case, whenever we create this, when we, when we create this, the container, we will get, much like secrets and orders, we will get a reference back telling us exactly where our container is and how you can retrieve it. So let's uh, go ahead and create a, a container really quick. And in case I didn't mention this before, um, with a generic container, you can add in as many secret refs to this as, as you want. In more of a R, in an RSA container or a certificate container, you are bound to 
specific uh, secret elements that you have to fill in, like a, an actual private key, a private key passphrase, and public key. We'll give us about 30 seconds or to a minute to uh, create the container. Does anybody need more time? Okay, we'll give it a, a little bit longer. Give me a little more time. We're good. All right. so we're starting to run short on time, so I'm gonna get through the rest of these really quick. Um, to retrieve a container, much like with secrets and orders, same sort of principle where we do a uh, get call on the ref that we were or reference URL that we were given in, in the creation step. In this case, you will see, much like the others. We will have uh, you know, our type, name. In this case, there is a, a field in here for consumers, which we're not going to go into. Uh, if you're really interested, the uh, Neutron and LBAS guys, this is something very specific for them. Um, but we're not really going to dive deep into that. If you're really interested, go catch one of the barbecaneers, and they can kind of fill you in on what the use case for consumers are. Um, we have the secret refs that we we're given. And obviously, our created update created and updated fields to uh, follow along. With that in mind, let's grab it really quick and uh, let's move on. So, oh, you mean for, uh, So, so the, the name itself is a key for Barbican to know what that secret is. In, this, in a generic container, it means nothing. In a, in a RSA container, it, that those actually indicate mandatory fields. Sort of answer your question? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, the same thing that the parser for the parent thing. Okay. So if you were parsing out, you would have a key. Okay. Any more time? Are we good? All right. Much like with secrets and orders, this should look very familiar. You can grab the list of the containers. Um, exact same paginated interface. So figure out one, figure them all out. Um, so let's go ahead and jump on that really quick. And this is just on a get for v1 slash containers. Anybody need a little more time? Awesome. Deleting it, exactly the same as secrets and orders. So this should look very familiar now. Uh, so we do delete call on the reference. Just like with secrets and orders, this is bound based on your user, which you do have permissions for. But let's uh, just go ahead and delete it really quick.
Anybody need a little more time? Awesome. All right. You can contain your excitement now. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So we've created a container. We've retrieved it. Created, got the list of it and deleted the container itself. So you've successfully gone through the majority of calls on Barbican. The primary benefit of all this is, is that the ways that you would normally create this stuff or normally store this information, Barbican does it all for you. So in the case of sec securely storing your secret, in this case, give Barbican your information through a creation or through a workflow order, it handles it all for you for, you for uh, safe retrieval through your application or through uh, through some other integration. So, not sure how much time we actually have for questions here, but uh, yeah, if uh, for slides, those are available there. If you're interested in more information about Barbican, we, oop, yeah, question. Yes, currently in incubation. I shall let the PTL answer that question. Yes, so that, that is purely just for this <coughs> demo workshop. Um, yes, there's a reason why we said it's very in insecure. Um, the, the whole idea of this is if you want to put it behind SSL, that's, that's up to a deployment decision. In this case, with the little workshop environment we created, we just tossed it up there and said everybody can play with it. So uh, I'll get your question in a second. So you could. In this case, if you wanted to create, if you wanted to retrieve the secret, you most certainly could. Uh, there was a secret that was created as a result of it. Um, beyond that, orders, the, the order itself is more of metadata to, uh, that gives you information about how the workflow is in progress. So if you have that secret ref available, you can access the secret that was created as a result of it. But in this case, it was virtually instantaneous, so we didn't really see any any steps. Yes. So in a real in a real world case, you would create an order, and once the order has come to completion, and is, has gone active, then you would then retrieve the secret that was generated as a result of it. Yes. Yes, so in the in theory of, I mean, Barbican in itself, while our default implementation is using Keystone, um, that is also a deployment decision. Um, and some companies may not, may not actually have Keystone for their authentication, and they might write some other wrapper to proxy and deal with authentication and authorization. Um, for Barbican being an open stack, uh, incubated project, our primary concern is uh, Keystone. So if there's problems with uh, Keystone, then yeah. Barbican, 
Barbican in and of itself abstracts out the, the storage of your secrets from your own applications database or file system or whatever into a its own service it's, that you can essentially isolate off. Um, so it's it's handling the secure storage and you could uh, you could say transportation of those keys. Does that sort of answer your question? In theory, if you have root access to whatever machine or application that, that has a key in memory, then, well, that's, you know, you kind of have an in-game scenario there. Thank you. Fantastic. I know there's another question back there.
Sounds like a great conversation to have offline. Now, uh, the Barbican guys, yeah, <laughs> the Barbican guys will be. Uh, uh, we have a bunch of design sessions today, so feel free to attend some of those. We'll be addressing a lot of these questions. Um, if we don't address some of those questions there, we'll be uh, here for pretty much the entire week working down over the, in the uh, uh, design summit areas and hammering out our, uh, our release. So thank you for coming. We, again, this is a, just kind of a, the basic overview of, of the rest calls that we were doing today. If you, uh, you're curious about the slides, have those available. Also, the Etherpad. We'll leave this environment up for a couple more days. Just don't do anything bad on it, please. I would hate to get a call. Um, so yeah, thank you very much.